started. This is LA2M Marketing Education, uh, which is rebranded from LA2M Left Hand Over Marketing, which kind of expanding what we're trying to do with the organization. Um, I'm Ross Johnson. I'm standing in today for Derek Marabon, who um, kind of founded LA2M and couldn't be here today, so I will be your MC. And uh, LA2M is a 501c3 nonprofit, so we meet every week. We have a great speaker every week who gives you know, some free education on marketing, um, often digitally marketing focused, so you can kind of stay up on the trends, and, and that's completely free uh, for you to come and attend. You'll notice that there are some menus in front of you where you can purchase uh, lunch for $10, which is a blue tip, um, but you're not obligated to, so if you don't want to have lunch, um, you can attend for free at no cost. Uh, how many first timers are here today? A couple people, great. Uh, how did you hear about LA Club? Actually, a client recommended. Excellent, tell them thank you. And how did you hear about LA Club? This guy right here. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> so, spread the word, we'd like to have more people coming here and um, you know, hearing our speakers. It's great exposure for our speakers and great education for, for all of you. Um, so, let people know and tell them to come by. Uh, a few announcements. Um, we have sponsorships available. And uh, I forget exactly how much it is. Two fifty for the month, and you get a advertisement on our email blast. It goes out once a week to I think it's like 2,000, 2,500 people. So that's a lot of people. Um, we get to announce you during each event. So it's a really good deal for um, not that much money. This month's sponsor was uh, Bud Gibson, and I think Bud has an announcement that, or shout out. Well, uh, we uh, put on the search marketing workshop, um, uh, did that on November 16th, uh, sold out, had about 160 people actually show up. It was great. We had Carter Sherlock, who you see is the event photographer here. He was our event photographer. He did it, donated his time, which we greatly appreciate, and did a fantastic job and kind of helped us get a bunch of photos to remember the event live. So at any rate, thank you all for turning out. I recognize the number of people here who were there, and uh, we'll be doing it again next year. Great. So thank you for sponsoring us to them. Um, as I mentioned, we are a nonprofit, and how we raise money is through donations. It's a recommended three dollar donation. Um, obviously, it's recommended; it's not required. And to to make money, we just uh, pass the hat. We're old school, as Derek would like to say, and uh, we just pass that around. And that money goes towards supporting Alex Webb on these functions. Some of our helpers who come every week, like uh, Carter Sherline who photographs every single event and posts those online, and Roger Rail, who records all the events, streams them online, and uh, allows people who can't get here today to, to view them either afterwards or um, come from their own office. But apparently, uh, we've got a huge following in Iceland, so it allows us to keep that, uh, that following going. Um, what else? Uh, the, the Christmas party, instead of having um, a, uh, a speaker, the week of kind of Christmas, or leading up to Christmas, we were actually having a Christmas party, which we have every year. They always turn out great. I was informed that we're going to have lots of desserts this year. Apparently, we didn't have desserts last year, and some of you have a sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah. So, we have heard your desire for sweets, and uh, we're going to make sure that there are sweets. So make sure to come. It's December 19th. I think there'll be an email blast going out soon. Um, they're always a lot of fun. It's just kind of casual networking. A good way to start off your holiday here. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Other than that, um, so today we have Wayne Aker, who's going to be talking about search engine optimization through um, rich snippets. So how you can increase click-throughs in this kind of cool technique that you know, I've only heard a little bit about, so it should be really interesting. Um, I first met Wayne, I think it was what, four years ago at Ann Arbor Startup Weekend, um, which I think there's only been one of it happened here in town, and a bunch of people kind of came into a room and broke off into teams and found a startup, so I remember thinking, he has an awesome beard, and uh, <laughs> I'm like hair polishly challenged on my face, like I can't grow, I can't grow a beard, so like I've always been really jealous, especially like November, where you know, November, no shade November, I can't do that, because people think I just haven't walked my face for a while. So, <laughs> but after that, I learned that he's, uh, he's an amazing developer. He even convinced me um, of how cool Drupal is, uh, which I wasn't a believer for a long time, he changed my mind. Uh, he's a good friend, and uh, we've been glad to work on a bunch of projects with him. And he's going to show us something really cool today in Rich Snippets. Um, and so I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. This is working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The mic 
Right. You can't hear me, let me know. Um, yeah, so I'm Wayne Aker. Uh, I'm a web developer. I specialize in Drupal websites, as uh, Ross said. Uh, I run a company called Ingenuity. Um, and today I'm going to talk about search engine optimization, but I'm going to talk about it a little different than what you might normally hear. Um, traditionally, when you hear a talk about search engine optimization, it's about how to increase your ranking for specific keywords. So how do you get up higher in the rankings? So if you're either the first result or as high as you possibly can get. Um, and so there's a lot of techniques that people use to, uh, to achieve that. You do on-site SEO, you, you know, craft your content in such a way so that, uh, so that you rank well for certain keywords. So there's also link building and social media. We've had a lot of talks here in the past uh, about how you can do that. Uh, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is sort of how you can maximize the number of clicks at whatever position you're at. Okay, so it's a different way because really, you know, your position in the search engine, if, if that's not in the, uh, in the search engine results, that's not an end in of itself. What you want is you want more people to click on your link. And so um, the reason why you normally want to get higher in the listings is because there's a pretty uh, good correlation between your position in the rankings and how many people click on your link. So you can see that if you happen to be in position one, uh, this is an average uh, that was done by SEO Moz. Um, you know, you get 36% of the clicks, and if you're in position two, you're all the way down to 12%, and then it goes uh, pretty dramatically down from there, so that if you're in position six, you might only get 4% of the clicks people that are looking at any given keyword search. Um, and so, of course, your, your, your first goal if you're uh, optimizing should be to try to get into position one because it's a huge benefit. But what if you can't do that? What if, the, what if the guy who's in position one is a major, major website? You're never going to displace them. Um, how can you steal some clicks or break this average up so that you're so that you can beat uh, whatever your average is at the position you're at. Uh, and so rich snippets is a way that you can make your search results stand out and steal clicks from sort of either side, below and above. And so let's see some examples so that you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I know this is probably a little small for the people in the back. Uh, most of the other examples will be much more close up. Uh, this is the search results for Cut the Rope. It is a, uh, it's a game for mobile. I think it's on a lot of platforms now, but it's on, I, on iPhones and uh, Android. And uh, if you look at the, the results in position two and three, you can see that there's the star ratings next to it. Both of them, I think, are four and a half stars. And it might be, it's really difficult to read on the screen, but uh, you can also see there's pricing information. Uh, next to the star, so it says 99 cents, and then it says the platform, in this case it says iOS or Android. That's an example of a rich snippet. Okay, there are other rich snippets on this page. Uh, this YouTube has a built-in thumbnail of the video for this demo they have down here. That's another example of a rich snippet. Okay, rich snippet is basically any sort of additional information that is different from the traditional search result. If you look, all the rest of these have just a regular search result, even the top one. All right, and so uh, the rich snippets will make your search results more eye-catching, things like the star. In this example, I think the second and third are much more eye-catching than the first. It's easy to overlook the first, actually. Uh, another example that you've surely seen are locations. This is uh, this one's been around for several years. A uh, good job, by the way, Connor and Neil here. This I searched for Ann Arbor Pub, and you're number one, so that's an uh, excellent job. Nice looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, places is another example of a rich snippet. This one's really well developed. They've been working on this one for years. Um, and then this is actually a newer one that Google's been doing. This has been around for about I think about six to nine months. Uh, it's only been out this year. It's called the Knowledge Graph. But uh, if you search for some famous person or some famous place, uh, occasionally you will get this kind of mini Wikipedia in the sidebar. Um, 
So this is something, you know, like I said, as far as I can tell at the moment, it's only really for famous, famous people, and generally historically. I don't think it can be very national or something. <laughs> All right, uh, why do people use rich snippets? Why are they putting these in? Because they're definitely increasing these. They've been increasing them for the last few years. Uh, first is to provide a quick answer to simple questions where people don't have to leave the search page. So this is an example, right? If you wanted some very basic demographic information about Albert Einstein, you don't even have to leave this search page to get it. Uh, you've probably seen some other ones like weather. Um, if you search for weather in Ann Arbor, actually, Google will give it to you right there on the search page. It'll we'll give you the current weather in the next couple days. Um, so that's, that's the first reason. The uh, second reason is to get uh, these snippets improve the searcher's ability that to find the correct page. So if you look back at something like that, Cut the Row, if what the person wanted is a video, they wanted to see what is Cut the Row, how, you know, how do you play it, then it's immediately obvious that I have a video down here. I can skip by all those other links, and I'm not going to bother clicking on those other links to find the video if that's what I want. So by putting this rich snippet in there, Google's making it easier for me as a searcher to find what I want, which makes me like Google, which means I'm going to keep using Google and I'm not going to use Bing. So that's one, that's one reason. And then, again, in number three, it's kind of similar to number two, but it improves the ability for the searcher to know what to expect when they click on a link. Okay, because uh, what Google doesn't want is they don't want you clicking the link, going to the page and saying, oh no, that's not what I was looking for, and then have to go back, because now you're disappointed in the link you got. So if they can get you to understand what's behind the link before you click it, then you're going to be happier with your search experience and you're going to keep using Google. So that's why Google is uh, filling up the search results with all these rich snippets. So how does Google generate the rich snippets? Well, it depends on who you are. If you are a big, big site, like Yelp, YouTube, Wikipedia, Amazon, other sites of this type, uh, Google will write custom code to figure out this information from your site so that they can show it. Okay, they'll have some engineer figure out how to pick apart your web pages and find all the right data, and, and you won't have to do anything. I doubt that's anyone in this room. But uh, the first ones, the first sort of rich snippets that were out there were all of this kind, where Google started sort of integrating major sites into it. If you are a smaller site, or for everyone else, uh, Google will look for special machine readable code in your site, okay, in the HTML of your site. And that code can tell it the information it needs in order to generate those rich snippets. Now, uh, I have a caveat here. Uh, Google will look for these codes, maybe. Okay, um, Google makes no promises that just because you put this code in your website that they will show rich snippets for your results. Okay, there's no promise, no guarantee. Um, but I have, I've done some testing. There's about, we're gonna see, I can't remember, eight or nine different uh, types of rich snippets and that you can generate, and some of them I've seen work about 100% of the time. And some of them, I wasn't able to get them to actually show up in live search results. I'll, I'll let you know which ones I think work and work easily and are, are more unlikely to show up. <coughs> All right, before we move on, we've been talking about Google. What about other search engines? At the moment, I'm not aware of any other search engine that's using uh, re that's displaying rich snippets using the, tech, the sort of code techniques that I'm going to show you today. Uh, they do show Bing, uh, does show rich snippets, but only things that they have coded themselves. So they may have rich snippets for videos or images from you know, videos from YouTube, images from Flickr or something. But they, uh, those are things that they've done that's not actually the, the technique that I'm showing. Uh, Microsoft is a partner in some of these data standards that for the mic for the metadata, the mic microdata. Um, so it's possible at some point in the future they will do this, but as far as I know, Google is the only one that's that's doing it on a large scale. All right, and this is the next couple slides are going to be technical, so if that's not you, you may want to take a bite of your burger right now. Uh, 
What type of markup does Google understand? Uh, there's three types. There is microdata, RDFA, and microformats. Okay, uh, microdata, and I've got some links here where you can get more information. Uh, these will all be posted on the LHM website. Uh, microdata is a WC3 proposal, so that's, WC3 is a sort of a standard body for the World Wide Web. They sort of, companies come together in that, in that group in order to determine the standards for everyone to use in their browsers and everything. So uh, microdata is a WC3 proposal. It's HTML5, whatever that means. Um, it does follow sort of the HTML5 conventions, but what HTML5 is, is not, that, that HTML5 is not a real standard, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, RDFA is much more complex, but it's also much more complete. Um, it's also extensible, so it's, it's sort of a metadata language that even if you're in the, if you have specialized content on your site, you can actually extend it and make up your own sort of standard to accommodate these, these uh, the information that you have. That's not really important for SEO because if we're looking at SEO, we really only care what Google supports. Uh, now they do support a specific type of RDFA, so you can use it, but um, it is more complex. Microformats. Uh, this is a collection of the domain specific formats. A lot of these have existed for years, but they've been sort of independent, and so the microformats is kind of corralling it together into a standard. Some of these that have been around, and if there are web developers in here, you may have used them before, are things like HCARD. So HCARD is a way of sort of marking up your a location, an address, so that it, it can be parsed apart by a, a machine. That's been around for a long time, and so have some of these other take from view, H calendar, address B. Um, but they've been kind of collected and they're now called microformats. The one that Google recommends is microdata. That's the one that they are putting the, the, their weight behind, although they do support, they will pick up your, your data if it's in one of the two other formats. And I, I, microdata is probably the easiest to do, so, well. So let's look at an example, and there's only two code slides in this whole talk, so this is one of them and the next one is, that's it. Um, so here's an example, and oh, I have a Vince example, but this is actually, it's not a Vince example, I changed this up. This is a review example. So this is an example of basic HTML code for, an, for a review of a restaurant. Okay, it doesn't have anything special to it. Um, it would display fine in the browser, as it is. Um, with a radio of 4.5. So how would we change this if we wanted to encode it with microdata? Okay, this is the same review encoded with microdata. Now, for those of you who are not web developers, anything that's in the, any of the colored tags, anything that's in the pointy brackets, will not be displayed in the browser. It won't be displayed when it's rendered in the browser. So this will look exactly the same in your web browser as what, as this one. They will look the same to the user, but when Google sees your page, they will see the underlying code, and there is additional information that is now in this. Uh, in this case, uh, all, it, it, with microdata, we have these item properties that are listed, and it breaks out each of the indi individual pieces of data so that Google knows what's what. And so here you can see that one of the properties is the reviewer, and that's U Ulysses S. Grant. You can see the item reviewed is uh, La Marita Pizza. All right, and the description is the actual uh, is the actual review, and then the rating is uh, specifically isolated there at 4.5. Uh, this is basically how mo all of what I'm going to show you works. Okay, there's different formats, there's different keys. Uh, different properties that are used for different, uh, when we look, we're going to look at events and ratings and recipes and several different things. They're all just basically different properties that you need to include. But this is the basics of how it works. Uh, if you have a CMS system, Drupal, WordPress, uh, something like that, uh, a lot of times you can get this kind of markup if you install a plugin or a module. Uh, you may also have to override or uh, customize your templates or your theme files for those. Uh, in order to get this kind of markup. 
But what's nice about the CMS is often if you put, if you can customize that markup, it'll become global immediately. All right, so you customize that, that template file, and then all of your reviews have this markup. Uh, or all of your blog posts, whatever. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm going to walk through a bunch of different types of rich snippets that Google supports and give you the basics of how you, uh, what you need to do in order to enable them. Um, but no more code. I, I do have links uh, at the end of this for resources so that if you want to get that code, you can get to it. All right, first one is location. Okay, uh, location is, uh, if you want to so for location metadata, you'll get this map, we saw this before, and you'll get the addresses and phone numbers shown up in here. Uh, this one doesn't work with microdata. If you want to have, if you have a local business, you need to have a Google Places page, and then you can feed this information into it in order to get this sort of location-based uh, rich snippet. And if you haven't done this, I think most people probably have done this if you have this kind of business because this has been around for a while. But if you haven't, you absolutely need to do this because this is also how you'll be found on like uh, phone searches for the maps and things like that. So if you do not have a Google Places page, go set one up this afternoon. Okay, the next one is what Google calls the verified author link. Uh, this is for bloggers, mainly. I, I suppose it could work on regular pages, but it's mainly something for bloggers. This allows you to get your face next to every uh, blog post in the search results. So here I have it set up um, on, on the company blog. And you know, um, and so you get your face, which hopefully is eye-catching, at least compared to you know, in the big list. Um, it, will, it will draw people's attention. And you also get a couple additional links here. You can see that it says by Wayne Anchor and more by Wayne Anchor. So in addition to having this that will draw people's eye to it, because there's a picture next to your post, you also get these additional links. And these links are kind of cool. When you click on the more by Wayne Anchor, you get a page like this. And so now you can see, look, now my face is over there in the Einstein spot. Uh, with kind of a mini profile, and uh, search, this is a bunch of pages and blog posts that I've written on, um, and you can actually search within just things that I've written. So you can see there's a filter at the top, actually, that has my name, and then you could search different posts within just my posts. Uh, the other thing is, this will search across multiple blogs. So there, if you look carefully, I actually have a personal blog and then I have a company blog, and because I have this set up on both of them, uh, it's combining them together. All right, so how do you set up the, the verified author link? Uh, the, the basic steps are set up a Google Plus profile. If you haven't done it, um, this is a good reason to go do it. I don't know another good reason to go set up a Google Plus profile, but uh, this verify author link, in fact, it's the only reason I have one, um, is go set up a Google Plus account, uh, because that's where it's going to get, uh, that's what you need to link to, and that's also where it's going to pull your face picture from. Uh, link, you have to set up a link on your blog post to that Google profile page, uh, and you have to use a special uh, rel equals author type link. You have to have something that says like by Wayne Acre in the in the blog post that links to your Google Plus page. And then on your Google Plus page, you have to link back to the blog. And then if you, if you set that up, uh, it will work. There's, a, there's another sort of more complicated way to do this if you don't want to link directly to the Google Plus profile. But uh, instructions for the simple way and that more complex way can be found at this URL. Okay, that Google tells you how to, will walk you through how to do this. And it even it has a sort of a checker tool so you can tell if you really did correctly. All right, next uh, kind of rich snippet is breadcrumbs. Okay, uh, the breadcrumbs are the things that, this has been around for a while. If you look under this search, first search result, uh, you see zingenuity.com and our blog. So this is a blog post, uh, and it's sort of in the hierarchy. There's the home page, the blog page, 
and then this blog post. So by setting up, by getting these breadcrumbs, I actually get more links sort of jammed into my search results. So I, I, people can go directly to this blog post. If they click on our blog, they can go directly to the top main blog page. And they can also go to the home page for the company. Uh, all from there. And actually there's, so I actually have five links here because I have those three links and people can click on your face, my face, to get the everything by Waymaker and they can also click on my name there, more by Waymaker. So I should get five links jammed into here so that I can control. Uh, and same down here, there's actually, I've got breadcrumbs on this second one as well. Uh, how do you get breadcrumbs? The, the, the main way you need to do it is you, you need to have your URLs be set up in a hierarchical structure and make sure there are no missing sort of empty gaps in that structure. So in this case, because with, with a CMS, you usually can arbitrarily sort of create these uh, links. Make sure you don't leave any holes. So on this blog site, so I have the main site, then I have the blog, is it slash blog? And then I have sort of my blog post broken out by month using these sort of like uh, the November ones. And then my the ones that go to a specific uh, post are underneath that. And so in the, in there's a page that you can get to at each of those. No 404s uh, at any level. And if you do this and wait enough time, Google should pick up your breadcrumbs. All right, so those, uh, so far we haven't seen any um, with the microdata. Yeah. This is question I forget. So you said you want to make sure there's no space. Like, what's the example of a space? So let's say that that I had that I that I had the blog page and I had this last one were both valid URLs, but the one with just the date wasn't a valid URL. Like I didn't really have a page there. I just had put it in there as the URL because I could make them up in Drupal, for example. Um, that would be a problem. It wouldn't be because there's now it can't sort of follow the hierarchy because there's a missing spot in, in that sort of with the slashes. That's what. Okay, so all of these so far haven't really had to do microcode. There is uh, microdata. There's a, a little bit that had to do uh, like rel equals often link. But now we're going to start looking at microdata uh, enabled ones. And so let's just to let you know how I did this. I went to my personal blog, which is very low ranking, I don't hardly ever post on it, it's got to be 10 posts. Okay, so there's like no authority, nothing. Uh, and so I went there and I created a bunch of uh, example pages to implement each of these standards. And then I waited. I did this in sep like September, so I guess it's been about two and a half months uh, since I set these up. And uh, I had some pretty good results, even from like a low ranking sort of page and New, new pages on a low ranking blog, and I got a lot of these picked up. And so, uh, if it works for me on that, in that sort of scenario, it should work for you as well. Okay, so going through these. Uh, the first standard is ratings or reviews. So we saw this a little bit when we looked at the code a few minutes ago. Uh, in this case, what I had is, I had written a, a review of the Worms HD, it's a game for the iPad. I had written a a review of this actually a couple of years ago and posted it on my blog. And I went back and I changed some of that code uh, so that it included the, the markup like I showed a few minutes ago. And I would say within about two weeks, my search result changed. And it, I got the stars and I got my rating written out and I got this thing that says reviewed by Wayne Aker, uh, all written out there. Now, notice in addition, so that's, that's what you would normally get for a, a review, is you would get those items up, up there. This review also combined with my verified author link. So this part of the bottom is actually coming through because I also have on my blog verified author link. So that's why my picture shows up, and then it, you know, this is that exact same line you were getting when we looked at the, the verified author link. So I have everything. This is jam-packed. Um, if I set up, I probably don't, I probably have some missing spots in my URL, otherwise I probably have, uh, I might also be able to get breadcrumbs in here. And then I would have something like 10 links jammed in here, all to where I want it to go. So, uh, so reviews can be combined with a lot of different things, but this is an example of what you do, or what you get. Um, I also made a video on the website, 
uh, it's, it, and it's a Drupal site that I do. And so I went in and I uh, went to our event pages because uh, just specifically for this talk. Uh, about two months ago, I went in and I changed our event pages and to add the event markup. And it comes through. So this is a live search result for this particular talk that points to our website. And I have the date and location uh, showing up in that underneath the URL. So that's what you can get for a single event. There, I mean, this is a real result. This one really works. And there is also an event, an aggregated event, like if you have a list of upcoming events. Uh, this is the format you could get. Now, this one doesn't totally work. Uh, this one is not actually showing up like this on Google. Uh, this is something I screenshotted out of the Google Rich Snippets testing tool, which I'll, I'll give you a link to in a minute. But they have a testing tool where you can uh, check to see if your code is correctly configured. And it shows you, gives you a preview of what it might look like. Uh, now, in this case, I can tell you that the upcoming LA2M's web website search result, or the page search result, does not look like this. But it could look like this, where the next three events are, shown, uh, are showing up and there's links to each of them. Uh, if you look at what it actually does live, uh, you can see it doesn't show up, but they have actually picked it up for our archive page. It's a little bit different, but you can see that it's actually got three different, uh, the last three items are showing up there. They're not linked, but it has actually broken it out. So it is picking up part of it. It knows about it, but it's just deciding, I don't know how they determine when to display it, but. They have not decided that for the upcoming. Next format is um, person. So this is a little different than verified author. Uh, this is if you have like an about me page or if you have a system that where you build profiles for people. Uh, and they're not necessarily written by those people, but it's a profile. Uh, then there is a specific format for person. And in that format, you can get a location and an occupation to show up. So you can see that I have that gray line in there, Ann Arbor, Michigan, here's the developer. Um, and this is out of, this one didn't show up from my test pages. This is out of the testing tool. It does show up on your LinkedIn pages. If you Google yourself on LinkedIn, you'll see that your LinkedIn search result does actually implement this format. Um, so Greater Detroit Area Google Web Developer, that's actually that same person format in, that does show up in results. Uh, there's a products format, and um, that looks a little bit like this. Now, Google has a separate service called Google Products or Google Shopping, where you can upload a feed. If you run a store, you can upload a, a whole feed and uh, of your, your prices and your availability of things, and then it will show it in a sort of a shopping interface. You've probably seen that where you can limit by pricing and stuff. If you've searched, you've probably seen it. This is not that. And if you have products that you sell on the, over the web, I recommend that you do the Google Shopping thing. But uh, this is a, a markup format that, you, it, that Google also supports. This might be a good idea if you sell a product but maybe you don't sell directly. Maybe you just have a product description on your page. You might do something like this. Uh, but what it does allow you to do, the, uh, the product markup allows you to specify a price and you can also specify availability. <coughs> It can also be combined with the review format. So in this example, and this is this one didn't come through. This is out of the testing tool. Uh, it's combined with the with the reviews. Uh, this is kind of a specialized version of products. If you have app or software, um, you can get that same pricing. In this case, uh, this L L M to go L A L A M L A to M to go uh, is our iPhone app. Uh, and so here we have the pricing, but if you have a software, you can specifically get uh, the platform, so iOS, and some kind of category tag. So we saw this actually at the beginning too. Uh, these are out of the, this one didn't show up. This is out of the testing tool. Um, but we did see a couple at the beginning when we saw cut the rope. So there you can see those are iOS and Android versions. If you do music. Um, there's a music format, so if you're a band or you put out like a, an album, you can actually have track listings show up. And I've also seen, it didn't show up in my preview here, this, this one didn't work, this is out of the testing tool, but um, 
I had also seen like actual play buttons in there where you can actually preview the tracks right there from the Google search result. So, um, and you can have buy links. This one can also, I think you can also uh, have purchase links. Is there, is there something like that for video? There is a video format as well. I did include it in the talk. There is a sort of a video markup that potentially could put a, uh, like a thumbnail. It didn't work on my, but, and I didn't, I didn't include it in the slides here, but there is actually a video format as well. But it's not, it's not necessarily like this. It doesn't do tracks, I don't think. I think it's like single videos. It's similar to what the YouTube, the, the YouTube examples look like. Uh, the last one I'm going to show you is recipes. And this one's actually really awesome. This one totally worked. Uh, this is just showing up. I, made, I just put the recipe off the side of a Kraft mac and cheese box um, on my website with a picture of the Kraft mac and cheese box. And this is showing up in real results. If you search for my name and craft, it will come up. <laughs> it doesn't rank highly, but it, you know, it does come up. And um, so the, the specialized things that you get with the recipe format is you can get a picture, and you can get a preparation time. You can see it says 20 minutes there, and you can get the number of calories. Those are some of the things you can get with the recipe format. So if you have recipes, this, this one got picked up really fast, a couple weeks. So if you have recipes on your, your blog or whatever, I, I highly recommend doing this, especially because you get the pictures. I mean, that, people are going to want to do that. Uh, this can also be combined with reviews. Um, and so you can see I've done that. Now, here's an interesting thing. So I, I have combined it with, re, with the review format here. And it says rating four and a half uh, stars with 353 reviews. I, I don't have any sort of review system on my blog that the public can review this. I just make those numbers up, and I put them in my markup, and Google is displaying them. So I'm not telling you to leave here and add stars and mark star rating markups to all of your pages because you can get stars on them um, with any rating that you want. But there are people who are out there who are doing that. Uh, there are some people who are adding this kind of review markup to their pages even though they may have no reviews at all, they may have no review system at all, and they are getting stars on their search results. So be aware, um, you know, so I wouldn't recommend doing that, that would be unethical, but uh, one thing you could do is you could modify your business practices to get star reviews. So an example of what I did is I just finished a Drupal training course uh, where I was teaching people how to build Drupal websites. And so I sent out this sort of survey that you tend to get at the end, well, what'd you like, what didn't you like, I specifically asked for a numeric review score because the next time I post that, uh, next time I offer that, that course, I'm going to do this markup because it will be, you know, it'll be legitimate. I got scores, I got reviews in a numeric format, and then I'm going to put these stars on it. So you may be able to make some tweak. If you're, if you're asking people for feedback and you're getting some kind of feedback from their customers about your products, Maybe you can ask them for a numeric score, and then you can put stars on your website. Uh, I suspect Google will stop allowing this at some point, but for right now, it's a free-for-all. And I can tell you that every single review star I put up worked. Um, other, well, some of, the ones that were combined with some of those other formats didn't work, but anything that was just a straight review, Google just showed it, and they didn't care about any sort of verification. So, so it works. Okay? So here's the big question. Uh, do rich snippets work? Do they actually increase your click-through rate? Uh, I looked for some scientific studies, and it was really difficult. Uh, I couldn't find anything myself. I asked my librarian friend, and she wasn't able to really find anything, uh, any sort of scientific studies that shows the increase of click-through rates. I did find a lot of anecdotal evidence. Uh, people who've written blog posts said, I did this, and this is how much my clicks went up. So for verified author links, uh, I've got some examples here. You can go read the blog post. But uh, one person reported a 30% increase in their clicks. Um, another person uh, reported a 484% increase. Uh, for recipes, somebody report, uh, reported a 150% increase. I suspect that it's, it's highly dependent on where you are in the search results and whether the other guys around you are using rich snippets. So if you look at something like you know, this cut the rope page again, in this case, the guy in uh, iTunes, which is in position two, has a rich snippet, and the, the result in, in position one does not. 
I suspect that that is probably about the best case scenario right there, where you could steal clicks from the top guy. Okay, if you're either far down or, or if the other people around you have rich snippets enabled, it probably will have less effect. But it's certainly better to put them there than to be the person, be the one in the list that doesn't have them. Because then you're really going to get overlooked. But I suspect the amount of in increase uh, could be dependent <coughs> on a lot of factors like that. Uh, one thing I'd really like to see is, and I, I couldn't find any studies on this, but I'd really like to see the effect on mobile. Um, on mobile searches with these rich terms because they do work on mobile. And if you look, so this is this is a desktop page. And so if you look at the rich snippets, ignore the advertisement and the YouTube, but just look at the rich snippets for those two links up there, you know, they're, they're shiny, they've got stars, but they're very small compared to the whole page. And there's a lot of other things attracting my attention. I mean, when I look at this page, first thing I look at is that advertisement on the side. And then I look at the YouTube video and then I look at these. They're, they're quite small, but if you look at these same type of things on mobile, uh, they're much bigger. They're much more prominent. I mean, look how much space these things take up. And all of these work. I mean, this is verified author link. That's the recipe. That's the sort of review for an app. Uh, they're much bigger on mobile, so I, I suspect that they have a bigger impact on mobile, just because there's not it's not as much competition visually. <coughs> all right. So how do you get rich snippets for your site? Um, <coughs> simple, quick is put the right code in your website. Uh, you can verify your code using the rich snippets testing tool. Make sure Google is indexing your site pages using Google Webmaster tools. And then you can wait and wait some more. It takes about two to six weeks and it may never happen. As I said, Google doesn't promise anything. But I got, I got everything to happen in about two to eight weeks that, that, was, that, that was ever going to happen. Um, and then you can either check manually or you can use the webmaster tools or analytics to, uh, to see if it's working. And I just want to show, I know I'm running out of time here, but I just want to show a couple uh, last pieces here. In the Google Webmaster Tool, they have a special page just to show you if it's picking up your rich snippets code, your micro code, micro data. Um, so on the structured data page, it will break down everything it finds on your site. So this is my example uh, blog page. You can see I have like one of everything. One recipe, one product, one person, one organization. This is the LA2M site. Um, you can see it's got 107 each calendar items that it found, each calendar formatted items. Those are all the events that it found up there. And it has a different page actually for your author staff where it will show your impressions and clicks um, that you get uh, from each of these sort of author verified links. And so this is a way you can test if your author verified and show up better than your others. Um, okay, uh, the rich snippet testing tool, uh, I have a link to it here. This will allow you to put, once you code up your site, you can put in a URL and Google will scan it right in real time and, uh, and show you what could show up. And they also show you sort of the, the data they were able to extract from it. They break it out by field. So then you can sit here and just keep trying it if you're, if you're sort of tweaking it and trying to get it to work. Okay, uh, best ways to learn this syntax. Uh, the best place is Google page. It's really easy to understand. They have all three formats and they have examples for every one of these in all three formats. They show you before and after for every single, for all three formats for every one of the things I just showed you. Uh, that's the link for it. There's also some more authoritative sites, but they're going to be, frankly, they're harder to understand if you I would start with the Google one. If you have more questions, you can go into these others. But the Google one's really easy to understand. Um, if you have a CMS, there are some ways you can get, uh, if you have WordPress or Drupal, there are some modules that can help you. Uh, I don't know a lot about the WordPress modules. These are some modules for uh, Drupal that will work. So what do you do as soon as you leave here? If you have a local business, set up your front place page this afternoon. If you have a blog, set up your verified author links. It might take slightly longer because you may have to alter your CMS code or your blog code to have those author, rel equals author links. Uh, but you should definitely do it. Only 12% of bloggers have done this as of, uh, of tech bloggers have done this as of August 2012. So if you have a blog that's outside the tech space, surely it's even smaller than this. In which case, you could be blowing them all away because it, you, know, you can increase your clicks over them and they, you know, your competitors won't have it. Uh, use Google Webmaster Tools if you don't already. 
Next step, if you have reviews, I highly recommend setting this up because reviews work pretty much every time I tried it. If you have events, consider the event format. Recipes definitely worked every time. Do that. And beyond that, uh, breadcrumbs and look at the other formats. The breadcrumbs may take you a little longer because you may have to redirect certain pages if you restructure your URLs. Might be better to do like when you redo your site. All right, and that is it. Great, let's give Wayne a big round of applause. I don't, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Wayne actually used to teach uh, at high school level, which is why he's such a good speaker, and why that's really easy to understand. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and uh, all those rich snippets with a picture of your awesome beard made me really jealous. So. <laughs> we have about five minutes for questions before we go around and introduce ourselves, so um, we'll probably have time for a few questions. I have a small business that's a service business. And we have reviews on another kind of industry site where we're ranked and then our people that we serve go there and review us on that site. So what would be the best way to display that star rating on our website? Okay, so yeah, um, basically you could periodically, I mean you, you could add this sort of review code to your site uh, on your site pages and then you, you would have to periodically go copy the numbers over, whatever your current reviews are for those things, and copy them over um, to, your, to, to your site. That would be the way to do it. Okay. But you could add this, I mean, and actually, you know, you should probably show it, but it, you know, if you do your HTML right, you don't even really have to display it to the user. It can still actually be in the code and, and work, even if it's not displayed to the user. Probably you should display it. I mean, why not? If you can say, like, you know, so many stars as shown on, and then a link to whatever this other uh, website is. You could you could just add something like that to your site, to your product. Uh, I was wondering how it works the other way around as far as location. So, like third parties like Yelp. Mm -hmm. If if I see a business result on Yelp, so it's a third party. Um, and, and obviously they have that information, can they actually add that rich snippet? Okay, I don't, I don't understand. So, okay, so we were talking about the location and the fact right. that any business can, can put its location on its website. My question is the other way around. If I'm a third party aggregator, okay, I have, I have business listings on my website, can I add their location as a snippet? To? To my website. Oh, so but you so you have okay, you have business, so you are like you are like a competitor to Yelp or something. Yes. Well Exactly. Well, I am not saying you could steal Yelp's information. No no no. But like if you already have if you already have the information, yes, you can mark up your pages with um there is actually a, an organization record. There is, I did show it because the location one, I, I don't know that the organization one will actually get into the location okay. thing. I think you have to use uh, Google Places for that. But there is a, uh, an organization markup uh, that I didn't show. If you go to that Google page that explains it, it's in the list. Right. It's, it's with person, and it, it can include an address. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but the, you, you know. If you're building out this site, you might as well maybe get that into the sort of template of what you're doing. Okay, and, and another quick question, I'm sorry everyone, but um, regarding the ratings, I was wondering if there's an alternative to that, or if, you know, those five stars, that's universal, that's what Google know to accept, and there's nothing else that... So, you can actually type, uh, you have to have sort of a, the five stars in your markup for... Um, you have to get it something with, with sort of five stars, although it supports halves. Um, for the the, uh, the stars themselves, but you can determine what this says. So this actually says 4.4 on this example. You could say 8, eight out of 10. Uh, you could say, you it's can actually still, put anything. It's still a five star system, that's right. You have to, well, if you want those stars to show up, you have to give it something, you have to somehow average it to a five star system, but you can change the, the thing that says rating and, and to say, you know, so many views or so many, I've seen some like that that say like 800 views next to something like that. So you, you do have some control over that, that next wording. But, but yes, yeah, so you have to give it something in a five star format for the stars. There'll probably be one more quick question. Oh, mine's quick. When, uh, when you do all this work with Google and you take the time to play nice with Google in so many different ways, does Google do anything in, to increase your page rank? 
Uh, as, soon, as far as I know, rich snippets have no, I, I'm not aware that they will have any effect on page rank. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, let's give Wayne another round of applause. If you enjoyed that presentation and want to see it again, you can see it again on the LA Club website, right? We all have it there. Um, Mary Lou Wolves, who also does a lot of really great work for LA Twim, um, writes really great notes, and she'll be posting that to the website. So thanks to both of you. Um, now we have a chance to introduce ourselves quickly. We'd like to get out of here by 1 o'clock, so we're going to pass the mic. Um, quickly tell us who you are, what you do, and if you haven't asked, you can ask us um, for your help, or for our help, I suppose. Hi, I'm Nancy Rojas Fairley. I'm a consultant for uh, three different manufacturers in Jackson, Michigan. And uh, um, thank you. This has been enjoyable. I'm John Cady. I uh, work for uh, Information Technology Services at the University of Michigan. Well, uh, web developer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jane Delancey, Delancey Design, um, all things marketing. Tom Shannon, local CPA in Chelsea, Michigan. I specialize in helping uh, solo practitioners, small companies, startups uh, with their accounting and tax issues. I help them keep their taxes and books on track. Uh, hi everyone, Shamir Ozeri. Um, I actually uh, just joined, for those of you who were here two weeks ago, um, I'm part of a new startup called MyFab5.com. We launched um, a week ago, two weeks ago, it was exactly two weeks ago. Um, last time I was here with the other co-partner, I'm here with Omid. Uh, check out the website, send us feedback, and uh, talk to us. Thank you. My name's Omid, um, co-founder of MyFab5. And as I said, it's a competitor to Yelp.com. Instead of people reviewing places, they rank their favorite places up to five in any category. So my favorite pubs in Ann Arbor, Connor Nails, or whatever else you want to rank. Hi, my name is Quincy Crawford. I'm, I'm a photographer for Washington Community College, and I also assist. Hi, I'm Bob Ferran. My business is Bob Ferran Photography and Commercial and Advertising Photography. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy from Dollarville Copying, your local digital print shop. We make things fast and cost effective. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham. I work with Dexter Builders. Hey, I'm Casey Peters. I also work for Dexter Builders. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Kai Bloom. I do search engine marketing at Nginx. Hi, I'm Laura Kirchner, and I um, oversee client accounts at Nginx. With Kai. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephanie Vogel. I'm a um, online marketing specialist at Online Tech. Hi, uh, um, I'm Paul Nowak. Uh, I do uh, analytics for a wholesale company called DCS South of Town on State Street. Hello, I'm Keith Person. I am the Business Development Director for the Betty Brigade. Um, some of you, and I obviously uh, talked to you before, um, we um, uh, specialize in relocation where we'll help folks move out of their homes, uh, do a lot of work with elderly or disabled people. But being a personal concierge company, we also can take care of your pets, we can run errands for you, uh, manage home maintenance for you, just take care of anything you need to do that you have to have done but just don't have time to do. I'm Dennis Dupinski, I do sales and marketing and help out with the video in here. I'm Roger Rail, information consultant and uh, venture catalyst. I uh, help make ideas work. Hi, I'm Erin O'Neill. I am the live trainer for LA2 and the content producer at Ingenix Digital Marketing. Um, we are holding a digital chat this Friday at 3. We'd love you for all, to, for all of you to join us online. It's going to be about brand imaging with Instagram. Um, so bring your questions, comments, um, fun experiences, and marketing know-how to our digital chat. Um, you can follow us at Ingenix or me at EK O'Neill. Um, and we hope to see you then. Hi, I'm Martin Smith, a marketing strategist with ASI Worldwide, but today I'm kind of wearing a different hat. I am an owner of a photo booth and DJ services company called Snap Views that's right here in Ann Arbor. Hi, my name is Beth Heiss, and I help a business 
called Sun Towels. And if you didn't finish your shopping on Black Friday, then I have a unique gift idea for you. We have towels that go over lounge chairs, boat chairs, and beach chairs, and they have a large pocket. Actually, it's a flap with three large pockets that fit over the back of your chair so your towel does not slide down when you sit on it or it doesn't fly off your boat seat. The towels can be embroidered with your company logo or your name. And so if you have any questions, see me, or you can visit our website, suntowels.com. And I also teach part-time at Adrian College in their business department. Hi, I'm Mary Gould. I'm with uh, LA2M. Uh, welcome, everybody, and it's great to see all of you here. Uh, thanks, Wayne. That was um, mostly not technical <laughs> but still very understandable. So, um, and, and also valuable. So the, I, I think most of the people in the, this room have um, a website that, that or are, are employed by someone that has a website that, that could really benefit from, from these types of tools. So, um, great, great talk and, and uh, looking forward to seeing all you back here next week. And also don't forget about the uh, LA2M Christmas party. We'll have um, sign-up information for that coming up very soon. It's on December 19th. Don't miss it. It'll be right here. It'll be super. It'll be great. And please join no us. No question. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Caroline. I run Connor Meals. And so we are planning a fabulous holiday party. And if you haven't booked your holiday party for your office or your friends, we have a great location. You're staying in it. Um, or if it's a smaller party, we have great areas that are closing in the club as well. So come see me. Hi, I'm Carter Sherlock from Prince Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. And the images from today go up on my group's Facebook page. Thanks, Gary. You know, Wayne. Um, I'm Ross Johnson. I run a web design development company here in town called 3.7 Designs. Uh, I also uh, help run the WordPress Ann Arbor group, which is a free group. It meets uh, the last Wednesday of every month, which is today, to talk about WordPress-related things. So if you have a WordPress site or develop sites in WordPress or just want to learn more about WordPress, come on by um, and learn more at WordPressAnnArbor.com. We're going to be talking about uh, mobile and responsive design today. So that's our event today. Uh, come back next week where we have Doug Anderson, um, who's going to be talking about selling in a changing world, and it should be really great. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming.